You are watching TFI. You know, when you think about it, right, you go to Microsoft's website, you want to buy a license of Windows 10 Home, it's 110 quid for a license of Windows 10 Home. You can get it cheaper on other websites, obviously, but that's how much it costs. How then is it possible to sell an entire laptop with Windows 10 Home on it for £99? How's this possible? In some cases, it costs more to buy certain keyboards and mice. A Razer keyboard, for example, a 3D connection mouse or a space mouse, or more than £100. An entire laptop, 99 quid. What, what is this going to be like? I have no idea. Uh, you see these kind of deals all the time, and then it's flashed up in one of those special deals of the day kind of banners. And uh, you see them all the time, and you're like, that's obviously going to be a load of crap. You click it on it, and it usually is. This one, though, the specs weren't even actually that terrible. We've got an Intel Celeron 2 core CPU, 4 gig of LPDDR4, 32 gigabyte uh, solid state drive of some description, it might not even be a solid state drive, but it has an expansion bay for an M.2 drive, so you can drop another 40 or 50 quid and put in a bigger hard drive, an all for 99 pounds. I, it's also got an IPS 1080p display. So obviously in most circumstances I would never have even dreamed of buying something like this but just for the purposes of my curiosity and the interest of just seeing where we're at with this sort of stuff I thought I'd buy it and here it is. So let's get it opened up and see what it's like for a £99 laptop. But it's called the Code... I mean... <laughs> what the hell? That's incredible packaging for 99 quid. For specs, in total, I have just mentioned them, but I'll give them again. 13.3 inch, so it's a 13 inch laptop, full HD IPS display, 1920 by 1080, Intel Celeron dual core CPU, front mounted webcam, which I fully expect to be utter tripe, four gigs of RAM, 32 gig of eMMC storage, 5,000 milliamp hour battery, 7.6 volts of Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, micro SD slot, Solid state drive slot, so there's your M.2 expansion bay, micro HDMI port, USB 3 and USB type C. Repeat. 99 quid. Let's open up this puppy and see what it's packing. Because it could be all bling and glamour on the outside. I'm staggered at the pack. This is packaged better than the HTC Vive Cosmos. I shit you not. This is better packaging than a 600 quid. Nay, 700 quid. VR headset from HTC. Mate, mate. So I don't know if you're gonna be able to get this in the US. This was a deal in the UK on the website eBuyer. Whether this deal's gonna last, I don't know. Uh, okay, so the cheapness begins with, with the, the power supply, which looks like the kind of power supply you'd get on a cordless screwdriver. Uh, so that's the level we're at here. So there's nothing else in there. Right, okay, the laptop itself. Decent bit of weight to it, not too bad. Packaging, it feels a nice, nice bag then. Oh, I'm cheap, cheaped out on that bag. Nice quality bag. I don't hate it. This is, feels really nice. It's got, a, it's got a, actually a really attractive, kind of anodized black finish to it. Never heard of Coda, but hey, everyone's got to start somewhere, mate. Uh, there's your M.2 drive on the back, which is, that, that's very impressive. Let's open it up first glance on the inside. Let's see what we're dealing with. Okay, this is, <laughs> this is incredible. You're, you're seeing this for the very first time, like I am seeing this for the very first time. What we have here is, it's, it's beautiful. It really is actually, it's beautiful. This is a beautiful laptop. Big trackpad, it's probably awful. In terms of usage, it, I suspect, is gonna be awful. Nice tactile feel to the mouse, actually. The keyboard, yeah, okay, I mean, it smacks of cheapness, but I've seen worse. The screen's okay, actually, pretty decent bezels as well. I mean, you're talking maybe only four to five millimeters of bezel around the left and the right. Bit higher, a bit more bezel on the top. Uh, with a fairly sizable chin. It's not 360, so it stops there. Mate, so far, so good. With the 99 quid laptop, I'm super impressed with this. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna fire it up. I'm gonna see what it's like with the 32 gig internal MMC storage, which I suspect is gonna be 
pathetic. You, you're going to get Windows 10 on that and left with nothing else for applications. So I'm going to put in an M.2 drive into this expansion bay here. And I've got a couple of them lying around. So I'll get this fired up and then we'll pick this up in a short while. Oh, it may well have been five or six hours since I filmed that first piece. And if you want to just uh, make what's the laptop like kind of an answer, this thing is spectacular. It is exceptional. All relative, of course, to the price. But long story short, I am superbly impressed with this. A couple of observations though that I'll go through that I've made since using this. I'll try and keep this as brief as possible, which is quite difficult for me because I do like to talk and include as much information as I can. Uh, first off, fingerprint magnet, no doubt, which is something that I can easily forgive. Just give it a quick wipe down. It's not an abrasive surface, so it's not gonna scratch through excessive wiping. Uh, build quality is spectacular, man. There's just no flex in that whatsoever. For the price, that is impressively built uh, picking it up putting pressure in some unusual places there is a couple of creaks now and again but nothing to be overly concerned about on the rear the m.2 bay uh, the screw that they give you to <laughs> to screw the back end of the m.2 drive is too short to reach the thread which is a bit of a design failure there but i mean on my drive in there it's just flapping around speaking of which that is one thing that i have done in the last five or six hours so the 32 gig of emmc storage that comes in here by default is not really enough to host windows updates and anything else that you want to put on there you're out of space in no time so what i've done You'll, you'll have seen it in the uh, the introduction of the video. I put in an advert for an M.2 drive, 128 gig for 20 quid. That is an incredible buy and it just transforms this laptop completely. It doesn't make it go any faster, but it removes any storage bottlenecks that you might have. It just turns this into an actual usable laptop that you won't be afraid to put applications onto. So that's one thing I have done and it turns this into a 120 pounds proposition, which is still not too bad. Okay, ports on the right hand side. The power input goes here. Power delivery has been quite impressive. It went from 20% up to 100 in around two and a half to three hours. Quite impressive given that it's a pretty weak and cheap power adapter. On the left hand side, USB type A, micro SD card, and then we've got a headphone jack. Oddly enough, strange choice, but a mini HDMI port, which I'm not aware of anyone or anything that, it, that uses that, unless, you, you know, camera cables occasionally might use that, but it's a bit of a, of a weird format. And then USB type C, tested, works like a charm. USB A and USB type C, that's better connectivity than some other laptops that I will not go into at this point that costs considerably more so getting into the laptop is is a bit of a chore in its own right uh, the one finger lift technique isn't happening it's a bit too stiff for that and there's also no points of leverage either to get in so what you've got to do is sort of wiggle your fingers inside and then underneath the lid and then try <laughs> it's actually more difficult than it, and it actually should be even on a laptop like this but once you're in you're in okay just just look at that Take a look at that. It is stunning. I was expecting this screen to be a pixelated, blurry, horrible mess. It's incredibly usable. For comparison, this here is a laptop that costs 15 times what this costs. It's the brand new for 2019 Dell XPS 13 2 in 1 7390. Uh, it has the 4K IPS display, touchscreen enabled display uh, and whilst it's clearly a far better screen you, you'd not be unhappy with either of those would you really so let's get into both of these and then we've got an identical wallpaper on both laptops so both are at full brightness and you, yeah it for, for the price that there is spectacular absolutely spectacular All right, so I'll be done with this one. This one is not on review today. And let's jump back into the code of spirit. A view and angles. Yeah, it does shift a little bit when you hit an angle, but it's nothing that's uh, unusable to be fair like, and it is exaggerated on camera. So the rest of the hardware keyboard is surprisingly quite nice. Actually, the keys have decent travel on them. The well laid out full size arrow keys. And there's nothing about this keyboard that I've kind of got unreasonably infuriated with. It's just been nice to use. It's got a nice sound whip. 
nice feel to it. They feel quite sturdy, actually. They, they don't feel like, you know, if you give them an excessive whack that they're gonna pack in or anything. So keyboard gets an absolute pass from me. I wouldn't be unhappy with that on that. Trackpad as well. The trackpad I was expecting to be absolutely shocking but i've seen worse trackpads on hp laptops for example the last generation x360 13 had the worst trackpad that i've ever seen in my life but this thing here is a joy to use i mean as far as trackpads go i hate trackpads but it's been superb so on the old hp for example when you touch the trackpad to move the mouse the cursor would jump when you lift your finger off it would be far too sensitive and the cursor would move which made clicking an absolute nightmare you'd end up dragging objects around the screen just by trying to double click on them so for that it's been great it's got full gesture support as well so two fingers for right click it's got two fingers scrolling great trackpad really really impressive trackpad also a good size as well so jumping in the uh, the camera app the camera is is woefully bad as you'd expect uh yeah it's i don't even think it's 720p it's uh it just yeah don't be buying this for the camera so the audio quality is usable but terrible. It's it's a real tech solution, which in my experience, real tech, the, the world would be better off without them. I've never had a good experience with real tech, and it just it was perpetuated here. I installed the real tech drivers, and it just turned the sound off completely. I had to go into the real tech drivers and then untick a setting which essentially just broke the speakers and disabled all the audio uh, with no clue that that was even what it was. Uh, but once it's on, it's on, it, dis it it projects sound and it's fine, I guess, but I'd recommend using this with headphones if you are using this as a media device. So although the, the audio is unexceptional, pretty much everything is unexce unexceptional, but all in all, together, it makes for exceptional value given the cost that this unit comes in at. The area which lets it down clearly and always was going to be is the performance of that two core Celeron. It's only got two cores and two threads, which means the majority of the processors running in Windows 10 in the background take up that processor resource and it just makes for a bit of a laggy experience, which honestly I can live with. It's a bit laggy, but it gets there in the end. You know, it's an old workhorse, it's an old deer, it's an old charm, it gets there in the end. So firing up Netflix, for example, you can see there's that little bit of a delay as it's just catching up with you. But once it gets there, it gets there, mate. And for playing video in media, it is incredible. So I'll fire up a Netflix video and I'll just show you, because you probably think to yourself, yeah, but okay, but does it actually play full HD video? Is it, you know, is it bogged down under the load? No, it actually plays it. It plays it pretty well once it gets going. So I'll fire up a Jim Jeffries special, audio's off, obviously, or else I get dinged for copyright. So here it is again, catching up. Uh, but once it's in, you can see there's a bit of a lag as it starts to chug away and get going. But once this stuttering, finishes and clears the rest of the viewing experience this is now going to be buttery smooth for the rest of the video all right we'll escape out of gym and let's jump into something a little bit brighter there we go so here we are in formula one drive to survive there's that little bit of shaky little bit of stuttering once it clears mate that's look at that So for playing Netflix, absolutely great. The rest of Windows functionality tends to be a little bit sluggish. So I'll fire up Google Chrome and you'll see here, so clicking the icon, it takes a couple of seconds longer than you feel comfortable with for it to fire up. Jumping into YouTube shortcut, again, you've just gotta, you've just gotta have that patience, but it's either having the patience or it's spending three, four, five times as much money on a laptop, which is gonna be a bit snappier. And uh, it, again, it depends what else you've got going on in the background as well as to how fast things are gonna fire up, but it will get there <laughs> in the end. Okay, some people are probably looking at this going, yeah, I'm not, I can't wait that long. And that's fair enough, but it does always get there in the end. And there's nothing you can do about it. It's that two cores uh, Celeron. Uh, the likes of Fusion 360 though, if you want to do light productivity work on this, it's gonna do it. it. It works, it actually does work. So here's Fusion 360 and it's orbiting like a champ. It's, there's no dropout, it's retaining the shadows. It's maintaining a decent enough frame rate to keep those shadows on. And then going into uh, the design environment, 
we can start up a new part and actually start sketching some entities down. And you can see here, it's dropping down planes like a champ. Sketch entities, no jerkiness, there's no jittery, there's no nothing. It's it's very usable actually. Zooming in, dropping another circle down there. Let's hop into the 3D mode, drop down and extrude. Make an extrude, that middle profile, profile there, grab him up. So yeah, it's not the best. It's not gonna win any awards. It's not gonna uh, shave days off of your contract times by any stretch, but hey, if you've got a bit of light work to do in the front room and you can't be bothered to go upstairs and grab your main laptop, then it's gonna do the job for you, mate. It's gonna do the job. What I also did was I went into the Xbox uh, model that I did for the, for the previous Fusion 360 video on the channel, uh, enabled ray tracing, and it bashed out ray tracing like an absolute baller. So it's, uh, it's passively cooled, so there's no fans in this device. So it, it can ray trace till the cows come home and there's not a single whisper of noise coming from this thing. It is deadly silent. There's no coil whine, there's no fans screaming, nothing. It's not the fastest, granted. <laughs> Only up to two or three iterations at this point. But the temps are pretty good as well. It hasn't gone hotter than 73 degrees throughout the entire time I've been using this which is seriously impressive given that we've got two cores screaming away two and a half gigahertz uh, in, a, in a passively cooled chassis but nevertheless it is just impressive that this is even possible how how come how is this even happening how have i got fusion 360 open how am i ray tracing which it will finish this will finish in the end how is this even happening on a 99 quid laptop it's bonkers it is utter bonkers anyway mate i'm gonna knock that on the head there i think that's enough do i recommend you buying this for work to actually be your main workhorse absolutely not this is just a laptop to have lying around the house chuck it in a drawer chuck it on the sideboard if you're just passing anything oh, i need to check an email i need to do a light you know light bit of work just on the fly fine for that kind of stuff but for a main workhorse obviously not good for media consumption and good just for those light tasks uh, without having to go upstairs, grab your main laptop, fire up your desktop, you've just got this thing lying around to get those jobs done. Battery life's also been pretty impressive. We're down at 64% and I've had this going for about two and a half hours, so it's estimating around five hours of battery life, and that's with pretty heavy usage and the screen on full brightness as well. I've been installing applications, I've been firing up Netflix, I've been doing all sorts with it over that time. Five hours of battery life is quite impressive. So, there you go mate, that's the code of spirit. Unfortunately, I can't find it in the US and it's not on Amazon either, so I'll put the links that I've got in the description. They're not affiliate links or anything like that, it's just to the store where I bought this from, uh, so you can check that out. By all means, search your region to see if you can find it, if you're interested. If you're a school, decking your classrooms out on this, not a bad idea for the price. If you're a student and you need something, just to tick yourself over until you do get a job with a bit more cash, where you can drop it on something a little bit better, Ideal for that, mate. Ideal. So there you go. That's the code of spirit. Not too bad. Not too shabby. Cheers. See you in the next one. Toodles.